Thank you, Kendall. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'd like to start by thanking the Scientific Committee for coming down on the right side of the fence in the let her speak, don't let her through the door debate. So thank you for the opportunity. Now, um, oh, I also want to say that I do, as I do behaviour consultations right now, but I do have a background in psychology and counselling. So where it's helpful to do so, I bring that knowledge and experience to my behaviour consultations. So, which ego state am I talking to you from right now? And how would you know? Or even, you're probably asking, what is an ego state? Our ego states represent how we relate to each other, and crucially, they can help or hinder the influence that we have on others. So park that thought for a moment, or that question, while we look at what's involved in a... Um, typical clinical animal behaviour consultation. So typically that will be um, a one-to-one -one relationship between the behaviourist and the client and then also um, there's a multidisciplinary aspect of the relationship between the client, the vet, the behaviour consultant and other paraprofessionals that are involved in the issue. And usually the behaviourist has been approached because the training or management system that the client relied on uh, has broken down, so there's frequently a requirement within the behavioural treatment plan for the human client to make changes in how they manage or train the animal client. And one of the intentions there is to improve the welfare state of the animal, which in turn increases the likelihood that behaviour modification will be effective. So a change in how the caregiver interacts with their animal requires a change in human behaviour, change which can arouse challenges to beliefs, values and actions which have up to that point in the client's perception succeeded in achieving their objectives in relation to their animals. And in one-to-one -one and in multidisciplinary approaches to behaviour modification, it's helpful to facilitate a collaborative approach which puts the caregiver at the heart of owning the resolution and at the same time it ensures that there's an effective influence by professional and specialist service providers. And in this respect, we can look at Eric Byrne's psychological transactional analysis model which for the sake of um, timekeeping and, and generally is usually shortened to TA. And this provides us with an effective vehicle for ensuring authentic communication, underpinned as it is by the core beliefs that everyone is okay, everyone's okay. We can think about that in terms of Manoj's talk earlier, uh, where he said everyone is right in their own mind. And also, if you're familiar with any person-centred counselling models, it fits in with the unconditional positive regard element of that. And a key concept in TA theory is the recognition of four different life positions adopted early on in life, but fluidly changing throughout life and throughout our interactions with people and throughout our development. And these positions have implications for how an individual operationalises their life and they can be reflected in client professional relationships by emotional responses to the relationship itself and by either a helpful or an unhelpful view of the respective competence of the parties involved. And those respective positions are um, four quadrants. One is a position of I'm okay, you're okay. I'm okay, you're not okay. I'm not okay, you are okay. And I'm not okay, and you're not okay either. So the one that we're aiming for in helpful communications is an I'm okay, you're okay position. So clearly effective communication is an essential skill which helps all parties that are involved in developing and implementing a treatment plan. <laughs> And Byrne made complex interpersonal transactions understandable by describing three ego states, each one a positional system of thoughts, feelings and behaviours, 
from which we interact with one another. And he called these ego states the parent, the adult, and the child, where the parent is a borrowed ego state housing interjections from nurturing or controlling parents and authority figures. The adult is an uncontaminated, here and now, reflection of reality. And the child ego state is a kind of filing cabinet of all the individual's life experiences. So we're looking for complementary transactions which are adult to adult for a truly authentic, um, effective communication. And um, what we're, I'm a bit sorry, I'm being told to stop. So what we're looking for, what we're not looking for is cross transactions. Um, so I'll just finish um, by saying that, um, well, concluding that an understanding of TA constructs and their application is useful in removing interpersonal barriers and increasing opportunities to effect change in the behaviour of the client and other actors in the treatment paradigm. And this contributes collaboratively to a successful behaviour and welfare, welfare outcome for the animal through human behaviour change. Thank you. Thank you.